finally, finally gave it. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Hi everyone. Cindy is now eating her food. I just thought she'd do that in the background for something fun to go on because my friend said in the last video there wasn't enough Cindy. So now there's more of her. <laughs> Today I'm gonna kind of do a fun video. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while, a lot of other handlers have done similar videos, and I thought it would be fun to do our own. So, guide dog equipment. Everything from gear, to just tools, to just fun things like toys and bones. Pretty much everything, or at least it's going to be almost everything, that I own that relates to Cindy. And sorry, I know my head is probably cut off a little bit in this, but you need to see where my hands are because you're going to want to see the things rather than my head. First and foremost, I don't know if you can see what she's doing, but she's eating out of her bowl. She just has one particular metal bowl that we do most of her eating and drinking from, and we got that from the school, and it's just, you know, a basic steel bowl. So that's that. We're going to be on Taste of the Wild. We were on Kirkland's. Both of them are good brands. Kirkland's a little... Um, underneath Taste of the Wild, but still a great food, just a little cheaper if you're looking to save some money. And Taste of the Wild's really nice too. I suggest something grain free because it makes them a little less itchy. There are a lot of other things that dogs can be allergic to, but grain free does help. So, and she's on salmon. She loves her salmon food. Okay. So, speaking of food, first we're gonna go over her bones, and they're all pretty well chewed. Uh, first is her Benna Bone, and this is, I believe, a bacon flavored one, but I love Benna Bones because they are wishbone shaped and they don't crack, they peel as you can see, which unfortunately gets stuff caught in them sometimes, like her hair gets caught in them like crazy, which I do not like, but they do peel so they don't get shards at all, and they're yummy, my dog loves this, as much as poodles love bones. Poodles don't particularly, at least not mine, doesn't particularly like bones, but uh, oh well. <laughs> So next, we have an antler. Both Ben Bones and antlers are the more pricey of the bones. Uh, antlers are very healthy for them because what they do is usually they chew out all the marrow and stuff like that, which has a lot of vitamins and yummy stuff in it. This antler was really cheap. I found it for like $8 while I was in guide dog school <laughs> in my class, and that's really great. This is a naturally shed antler, which is really cool because that means, you know, no animals were harmed in the making of these antlers. This is, of course, a split antler. Split down the middle, you can get whole antlers as well. Next is just a normal cow bone, and this is a hollow one. You can get these bones with things inside of them. This one's hollow, and this is probably her least, well, her second least favorite bone. She kind of goes between chewing different bones depending on what she feels like, but of course, as I said, this one doesn't have anything in it because I don't want her to get an upset stomach. It's really, really important that she doesn't um, eat a lot of one thing other than her food because we can't have sick guy dogs while we're out and about. And then, last but not least, we have a Nyla bone. She got a Nyla bone in class, so this is the bone she got in class, and as you might be able to see, it's not really that damaged. Uh, Cindy's not a huge chewer to begin with, but she's not a big fan. This is a plain Nyla bone. She's not a big fan of it. Um, she'll chew it from time to time, but, you know, her opinions on it are meh. So, I'm thinking I might try to get her, like, another flavor of Nyla Bone, like there's peanut butter and bacon and chicken. I might try to do that. Nyla Bones are really nice because they last a long time, so if you have a dog that's a really heavy chewer, any of these bones are great for them. They're all healthy choices, but Nyla Bones are particularly good if they're heavy chewers. Okay, next we're going to go over gear and equipment. Uh, first is, of course, the normal standard leash. Now, these leashes are cool. You might have seen it if you saw my video about class training, but they have a main clip here, and then they have a clip here, and a ring, an O-ring, and you can unclip onto the O-ring and back onto it. And this creates, oh, give me a second, I can never do it with one hand. Uh, this creates this leash, a uh, shorter leash. And then you can unclip here, and you can go to the end of the leash to another O-ring and clip there. And this creates a longer leash, and we use the longer leash for relieving and things of that sort. And uh, the shorter leash is for working and healing and all of that stuff. Okay, you can't really see here, not well, because uh, it's attached to my bed over here. But I have a tie down on here, and I also have uh, her normal, I think it's a nylon collar attached to the tie down. This is used when she sleeps. She sleeps on tie down. When I can't watch her and she has to stay home by herself, she is on the tie down. It kind of like shows her that it is her place, her safe space, and it also ensures that she's not going to get into anything. 
On one end of the tie down, as you saw, there was a clip, and then I clipped the clip to one of her collars that also has a clip. And on the other end is like a big plasticky ring. That is what we, we call it a furniture ring, I think, and we just put it around the legs of furniture. I also have another tie down downstairs I'm gonna have to get to show you guys, but the other tie down I bring around with me, like if I'm traveling, I have that one to put around things. Cindy is fine on her tie down. If she's on it, she sleeps. <laughs> That's what a tie down means to her. Sleep, be peaceful, be comfortable. That's what a tie down is to her. Next, we got the good old fun stuff. This is Cindy's harness. So, Cindy's harness is leather. It's really nice. Uh, you'll see these harnesses in most guide dog schools, aside from the sign. Guide Dogs for the Blind in particular has a different harness. Guide Dog Foundation has an offset harness. I mean, they're all a little different. Generally, other than Guide Dogs for the Blind, they are this kind of design. And again, it's just leather. You're gonna see clips here. You can actually unclip the handle from the harness right here and right here. So that's really nice for plane rides where the handle isn't getting in the way of the seat and the dog can tuck under the seats. And then this is uh, goes around their back. These, what we call ears, are what keep the handle from going too far up or down and smacking the dog in the head. And it also helps you to feel what the dog is doing a little more because it pushes against these handles. This is the chest strap right here and it has reflective tape on it. Um, like, that sounds ghetto, but it, it's like made in the harness, made into the harness. I don't know if it's tape or what, but it's reflective material. And so that is very useful in making your dog and yourself visible when you're traveling. And then of course the O-rings just attached to the actual handle. It's nice that it's an O-ring because you can feel the movements of the dog better that way. I see, she's hiding it. And then you, there's the top of the handle and you can hold on to it, of course. So, and then of course this is the belly strap that you go all the way around under their belly and you strap it on just like that. And that is the basic harness. Now, for my harness, I have a handiwork sign here. And uh, for those of you who might not be able to read it, it says, working guide dog, do not distract. And I made the the actual text part of it. I bought the handiwork sign, but as some of you, if you're guide dog handlers, know it usually says like, do not pet me, I am working. And it's like a small sign and it like bounces around and gets crooked <laughs> in the actual compartment here. And I didn't like that. Not to mention like I'd have people thinking Cindy was like a different type of service dog or not even a service dog, like an emotional support animal, which as I rant about are not a lot of businesses. And so it just drove me nuts. So I put this here so people knew that she was a guide dog and also so that people knew that distracting also meant calling to her or making kissy noises and stuff like that. That happened a lot and it doesn't happen as much because of the wording of this sign. So um, I like it. You can print out any sign you want. I just made this really quick on Photoshop. I have some graphic design knowledge and stuff and um, I asked my mom to help me pick out a flamboyant color <laughs> and she wanted pink because Cindy's a girl. The Handiworks uh, pouch is really nice except I found that it, this is only like six or seven or eight months uh, old in use and it's already kind of getting scraggly so I'm gonna have to look for a new pouch or a new sign holder. And then at the back of the Handiwork sign, it of course says Handiworks in Braille and I think it's a nice uh, contrasted print, but there's a little pouch here. In the pouch we have, or I have, Cindy's ID from the school. Uh, and again, if anyone's watching, guide dog schools, I think it was upside down, guide dog schools do issue IDs to their clients, but in the US, these IDs don't mean anything legally. Oh, wait, I'm gonna get Cindy. Cindy, what y'all doing? Okay. We're sit near the camera. Cindy, sit. Yeah, hang got her out. Look, big ear. Okay. So as I was saying, these IDs are not necessary. Uh, federally, they have no power. They don't mean anything. Our schools just give them to us to show pretty much that these dogs were trained by this specific school. So it's kind of like a trademark. It might be certified with a national agency that certifies service dogs. But again, that doesn't mean that the dog isn't allowed access or is allowed access anywhere. It's more about the dog's task and what it's trained to do. Pretty much this card just said by uh, state and federal laws, my dog's allowed anywhere and she's been certified and has gone through the 21 day training process with me, or 20 days. Um, and, and then my trainer signed it and that kind of stuff. Also inside here, 
I, yeah, what am I getting? What am I getting? I have a roll of poop bags, which is kind of unrolling, but these are really, really, really important. Always have a roll of poop bags with you no matter where you go when you're a guide dog handler. And by having it in this pouch, I never ever find myself without poop bags. That is the basic harness. So, um, next for equipment, we'll do her collars. If you can see here, she has on a flat collar right now, and <laughs> we actually ordered this off Amazon because everyone thought she was a boy dog. I don't know why, she's like a beautiful, like, gray, girly, kind of looking poofy dog. I mean, I don't cut her in that ridiculous show clip, but she is a little more girly looking. Yet people would always ask, like, is that a boy? And, no. So, she has a, a pink rhinestone-y collar that's maybe about an inch and a half thick. So it's a pretty thick collar, but Poodles had very long necks, so that wasn't an issue. And then it has her tags on here. It has one tag that says her name. It has uh, her rabies vaccination tag. And, and then I, I haven't put on her tag yet. That says she's from Guide Dogs of the Desert and has her ID number and her phone number. I really need to do that. That is on another collar, which is right here. So we need to explain this. We need to tell you guys something. My school issues prong collars and chain collars. And they don't do this lightly. <laughs> they are very careful in describing to us how to use these tools, what these tools are, when it, when you have used them, the effectiveness of these tools, the dangers of these tools. Prong collars and chain collars are not dangerous if you use them correctly. They're a tool like any other device ever. A flat collar can easily be more dangerous than a prong collar. Prong collars, they pinch. So. I'm gonna show you right here, and this isn't gonna hurt me, but if I put it around here, I pull it. That's about as hard as you'd pull for a correction. And if you saw, these little guys, these little pinchers, come together, and they pinch the skin. And so that is for a correction where some dogs, either they need a hard correction to actually listen, or um, they really just need to be directed, or in Cindy's case, a hard correction is all she needs. So. If she's doing something stupid, she needs one correction with this guy, and she'll stop doing whatever she's doing that's stupid. <laughs> Won't you? You do some stupid things. Yes, you do. Actually, with the prong collar, we don't use it as much as we used to. More what we use now, and that's what my school actually told me I didn't have to use it all the time. They said I could transition out of it, and I've been able to, because with this prong collar, we've used less physical corrections, more verbal corrections, so it's making other corrections actually more effective, which is great. And she's not scared of this collar either, by the way. It's not scary to her. It's just, you know, collar like any other thing. So the next collar, and this is the collar we use most often, is her chain collar. Um, some people call this a choke chain or whatever they have it, but we just call it a whale tail collar. <laughs> we like it, or slip collar. This goes around their neck, just of course, like any other collar. You put the whale tail through, go around like that. And then, like again, like any other collar, you pull it, and it tightens, and then it loosens when you, you know, go slack on the collar. So, uh, the, the wonderfulness of this collar is that when you pull it, it makes that wonderful zippy noise. So usually with a dog, I, I think she's probably looking at us now, she's like, oh, what did I do wrong? With, the, with this collar, the magic is that it's normally the sound, it's not the actual correction. So that sound is going to snap them out of it before you have to give a hard correction with this collar. Now, these are actually much more dangerous than the prong collars are. The prong collars cannot tighten, but these can. These can tighten so much that they can choke a dog. So again, you have to know how to use these correctly, uh, which means a correction is a very, very fast jolt of the collar. A correction is not pulling or yanking on the collar or letting your dog pull or choke themselves. Uh, that would not be an effective use of this tool and it would hurt your dog. So you have to work with someone who understands these tools or be trained how to use these tools before using them to ensure your dog's safety. But yes, this is mainly what we use for Cindy. Also, we put that collar on top of her other collar. I usually always leave the flat collar on, whether I use the prong collar or the chain collar, because it has all her information on there, and I just like having that information on that collar. And not to mention, it's a pretty collar, and I like people to know that she is a girl dog. Sometimes they still ask them. Next, because Cindy is a poodle, 
she has a few interesting things here. Uh, I groom Cindy myself. Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. It's a long, arduous task. Uh, I learned how to groom because I had a Bichon before Cindy as a pet dog, and that poor Bichon had some very, very scruffy cuts, but in the end I learned how to groom him, and then when I took on Cindy, I just used those skills. Her first cut was a little scraggly, but not bad, and ever since we've been getting a lot better. Uh, she's about ready for a cut right now. Her face, her face is, is getting long, but um, yeah, so I learned how to cut her. So what I have for Cindy, and for those of you who don't know, poodles grow hair continuously and you have to cut it every six to eight weeks for them to be healthy. You also have to comb it vigilantly every day to make sure they don't get knots and tangles because that's very painful for them. So a poodle is a very large responsibility in that case of grooming. Either you're going to spend a whole ton of money or you're going to spend a whole ton of time taking care of them properly. So first and foremost, here are my clippers. I have an Andy's Ultra Edge. This is a very, very nice clipper. It was an investment for me. I think I paid 150 for it. It has already gotten me through, I think I've shaved her six times now, either five or six, since I got her seven months ago. These guys have not failed me yet, so I paid 150 for them. If I had went and bought her grooming, or paid for her grooming from a professional every time I brought her, that would be $80 each time. These guys have already paid for themselves, and I like doing it on my own. I can cut her exactly the way I like, so yes, I like this. Uh, right now, these have a 10 blade on them. Uh, 10 blade is from her face and usually her feet and uh, sanitary clips and stuff like that. I also have, I have another pair of scissors that I usually use more than this, but this is for like hardcore. She has like, some gunk stuck in her. Um, I have these really, they're really nice scissors. They're kind of large, but <laughs> they're not grooming scissors at all, but I like to use them for certain things because they cut so well. They have a really good blade on them. I also have a little comb in here which I use to straighten out her hair before I groom it because if you groom it without being straight, uh, that is going to be a very messy groom. And then I have all her other blades for her razors. Um, I have two fives in here, which are these guys. One is a five FC and one is a five. I prefer to use FC finish cut because they're safer. Normally, if you get just a number with a finish cut or AKA FC on the end, it's not going to be as safe. Hi, Cindy. Why are you doing? Oh my goodness. So I have five. That is mainly for her body. I clip her in a five. Um, and then I have a toe blade. Some some groomers like this, some don't. I like it because you can get... Are you doing that? Don't do that. Because you can get between her toes. And then I have... Uh, I think this is three and a half. It's around three, three and a half. And this is a longer blade and it is for, wow, her legs. I like, that's how I groom her. Shorter feet, longer legs, medium body. Cindy, stop. Don't lick the wall. Why are you licking the wall? Next with grooming, and I got these bags, by the way, from the dollar store. They were super cheap. They were like a dollar each or something, maybe something like that. And I like to store all the grooming supplies in them because then they're all nice and organized and I don't lose them. Her normal grooming supplies, as I said, she's a poodle. She gets crazy hair that doesn't fall out but needs to be groomed all the time. And some of these brushes might have hair in them, sorry. Um, I do clean them out every few days, but they get hair caught in them sometimes. Uh, this is her normal comb just a normal long tooth metal comb. Uh, this is the one I use on her most often. Yes, that has a little bit of hair in it from today. Um, a little bit of thin and thinner brushes. This is the wire comb that I use for. This is for her body, have her coat. This is another uh, comb I have. It's kind of like a backup comb. I might bring a lot of traveling or something like that because it's smaller, more compact. This is a second wire comb, uh, which I use for her legs. I find like a smaller one is really nice for her legs. So I love that. This is toothpaste. I got I got two of these on Amazon and they were super cheap and I love them. Hi, Cindy. I love them very much. I brush my dog's teeth every day and comb her every day. And I use this, I think it's chicken flavored, maybe. Then I have uh, this, I, yeah, this is uh, pretty much doggy perfume I got from my school. I use it every once in a while. If it's not time for a bath yet and she's starting to get a little smelly, uh, I can't even read the name of it. Sorry guys, I'm blind, but uh, very useful and helpful. And um, you just spray a little on her coat and then comb it in 
and it helps. Poodles are not particularly smelly. A lot of the other breeds for guide dogs like Labs are, and they use this a lot more than I do. Cindy gets uh, a bath every time she gets shaved, so she gets a bath every six to eight weeks, so she also doesn't get smelly because of that. Next, I have Cindy's ear wash. Now, poodles are notorious for getting ear infections. They have hair that grows up in their ear canals that you have to pluck and uh, you have to clean their ears vigorously and they get yeast infections in their ears. It's a mess. <laughs> well, it is. Cindy's already had an ear infection since I've had her. Puppy Razor said she had one when they had her. So what I use now is this Odie, Odie Smooth ear cleaner that uh, my vet recommended me. It's really, really nice. It's supposed to stop the infections before they get there. It smells really nice, which is nice. A lot of cleaners do not smell good, but this stuff is awesome. Maybe I'll do a video on grooming her sometime. Next, I have this stuff, which is BioGroom Ear Fresh Ear Powder. What this stuff is, is it helps you pluck ears. <laughs> it's kind of like powder that you put into their ears that you're able to actually grab their um, ear hair better. It gives you a grip and then you can just pluck it out by hand. We do not pluck their ears with like pliers or anything because that is painful for them and it makes their ears bleed and it's just all sorts of bad. So I pluck her ears sometimes by putting in this stuff but I do it completely by hand and I do it a little at a time and I do it gently and that actually makes ear plucking a pleasant experience and not a painful one. Next I have all of Miss Cindy's toothbrushes and stuff like that. So I have a variety of things like this that go on your finger and you can brush their teeth by putting your finger in their mouth and then this is the brush and you just put toothpaste on the brush and squish it in. Or I have this kind of toothbrush where it's a normal, more normal kind of toothbrush and you brush their teeth this way. And then last but not least here, I have her nail clipper. Now, because I am legally blind, I am not comfortable clipping her nails properly. I am comfortable clipping them if they're getting long. I'll clip a little bit off of them so that they're not like grotesquely long or anything. She wears a lot of her nails down naturally when she walks because she walks so much on cement with me. But if her nails are getting too long, I will clip them so at least they're healthy. And then when I go and visit my vet, if they're still too long, then they will clip them for me but because I don't want to hit it quick and I can't see her nail. I know I don't clip them as short as they should be, but this is the nail clipper I use, which I love very much. It's sharp, it just gets the job done, and it does have a little guard here for the nails if you want to use that, but yeah, it's really nice. Those two bags were in this tub. Uh, there's some other things in this tub, and I'm just gonna go through quickly. Uh, this is just an empty jar, which I used for my other dog for treats. These dogs do not get treats here, but I like to keep it because there's always stuff you need to store for your dog. And I'm sure I'm gonna find something, some use for this. It's just a peanut butter jar actually that I washed out thoroughly and now it's great for storing things like treats. This is another container I used to use as a water bowl. I have another thing I use now, which I'll show you in a sec, but I also have an old leash in here. This is just a really plain rope leash, which I used to, like I still really like it because I find I can feel her movements a lot better through this rope leash uh, than I can with things that have a lot of metal in them, but I don't use it anymore, I use her school leash, so it's kind of just hidden away down here. This is uh, combs and stuff for, and this is too, um, these are razors that I have packed away in here. Um, these are razors for my old dog, and my old dog was a small Bichon that you might have seen if you followed this channel for a while in my very first video, maybe it was second on this channel, but uh, yeah, they were small razors, not as nice for my Bichon Frise, which I used to shave him. When it came to Cindy, we needed something a little more heavy duty because she's a big poodle and she has lots of hair. Um, so that's why we switched brushes. Next in here, I like to keep everything sorted in the block bag, sorry, um, is a Dremel. <laughs> it doesn't have its battery in it right now, its battery's in the bag, but this is a Dremel. Uh, I used to clip my Bichon's nails with this. I could maybe clip Cindy's nails with it. I haven't asked my school if they'd be comfortable with that yet. I think they'd probably be fine with it, but Dremels do make a lot of noise and I don't want to set her back. She's brilliant with her nails being clipped. She has no issue with it. I don't want to scare her. This is a Dremel. A lot of people use it for nail clipping because you grind the nails, you don't clip them. And I liked it because I could feel the nail with my finger every few seconds after using the Dremel. So it was nice because I know how far down the nail is getting. I like these a lot. Next, I'm very sorry I own this. I never use it. Uh, this is a retractable leash. They're horrible. You can't feel your dog through them. Just don't use these. They're they're like 
created for hunting dogs or like I think sometimes search and rescue dogs is their purpose. They're, they they encourage a dog to pull. I got this leash when I adopted my first dog and he came with it and so I've just had it ever since but I never use it. So yeah there's that. Extra thing of toothpaste because I got two. And poop bags. Lots and lots of poop bags. You want to buy them in bulk and you want a lot of them at one time. Uh, poop bags are any dog owner's best friend, but especially a handler of a guide dog, because you go all over the place, you need to bring the poop bags with you. Right, Cindy? Right, Cindy? Yeah. Next is our bucket of fun medical stuff. <laughs> so, this is everything I have in terms of medicine for Cindy. I have some, like, compresses here. I have um, a bandage in here, like an actual one. <laughs> I have just some wipes in here for her. I have some charcoal. You want to consult with your vet before using charcoal, but not only can it really help in stopping infections, if your dog is very, very ill and poisoned with something, sometimes you give them charcoal and that charcoal will absorb the poison. Of course, always consult with your vet. I have Zymox. Zymox is for when Cindy gets infections in her ears. If I realize that, pretty early, this Zymox will kick the infection's butt before I have to go and spend like $80 at the vet to, to get it treated, so this Zymox was like 20 bucks on Amazon, and it's great for ear infections, so yes, Zymox is very nice, it's small, but you only need to use it for like a week with the infection. I have vet wrap. Vet wrap is nice for cut paws, broken nails, scratches, if you ever got a hot spot, vet wrap. I have her Simprica. Simprica, this is for when we're actually traveling down to Canada this summer. Where I live in Las Vegas, you do not need Simprica because we don't have ticks and fleas, but where I'm traveling this summer, there are ticks and fleas. So this is three months of uh, that kind of pest protection for my Cindy girl to make sure she doesn't get sick or, you know, get any kind of diseases or anything. And then lastly, I have Heart Guard. Now, HeartGuard Plus. Cindy is not on it right now. She is on something called ProHeart, which is an injection that lasts for like six months, so it's very nice. You don't have to remember to give your dog one of these every month. Either way, I think I'm going to go back on these. They're to protect against heartworm. Heartworm is a horrible parasite, which gives a dog a very slow, painful death, and you don't want it at all. So it's better to be safe than sorry. This is Cindy's favorite part. <laughs> this is Cindy's toy bag. She has lots of toys in here. Cindy's a very playful dog. I got this bag from Guard Dogs of the Desert when I left. They gave all the graduates one and put all of our class material and stuff we got and stuff like that in them. Now I use it for toys and storing some extra materials and stuff for her. So first is her dragon. Excuse you. First is her dragon. It squeaks. Cindy loves anything that squeaks. Uh, unfortunately, Cindy also loves to play tug with her toys, which after three times we finally learned don't play tug with the soft toys <laughs> because as you can see they rip at the seams, so I'm gonna have to sew this before she gets it again because she likes to eat the stuffing out of it, as most dogs do. So no stuffing for you, I'm sorry. But yes, this is her dragon toy. This is her other dragon toy. I don't know why we've got so many dragons. Cindy pulled the tail off it. <laughs> I don't know how she did that. Uh, it's always good to supervise your dogs when they're playing with their toys, always, because if she'd eaten that, she would have gotten very ill. This is her dragon, it also squeaks. She likes it. Um, but she would get the stuffing out of it again, so I have to sew that again before she gets it. This is her favorite toy, I'm so sad when it ripped. Uh, we got this in class, it's her shoe. She loves her shoe. And it also rips all these toys. Like, they're pretty decent toys. They costed a good amount of money and they all ripped in the seam. So, never ever ever play tug with these types of toys. That's the lesson. Next is her rope. Cindy likes her rope. Uh, this is good to play tug with. Always play tug with a rope. Do I get it? Do I get it? Do I get it? No, she's like, we're not playing right now. We're doing something else. Her other, and her, this is her favorite, her actual favorite. Uh, toy is this Wubba Kong. <coughs> Cindy loves her Wubba Kong. This is the second one we have. We have a bigger one outside in the backyard that is really beat up that I probably need to throw away soon. This one's a little newer and smaller. The Wubba Kongs are great. They love to chase after them. They love 
that noise and they're pretty safe as long as again you're supervising to make sure they don't chew anything off them. I think that's all her toys for now. We're slowly building up on them. So next I have a steak and this is used like if I'm camping or something like that. I like to drive this into the cold hard ground and there's one of these clip things. I know they have a name, I forgot what their name is, but I clipped this onto her leash. I would probably bring a long line or something in that case. Then I would let her roam around a little bit on this. And lastly, I also have a scrubby bone thing. Um, this is like actually a little spongy kind of thing, which I use to clean out her food dish and, and slash water dish every once in a while. Always clean those out with soap and hot water every while because do you like it? Because uh, they do get all germy and yucky. So, always clean those up. I lied, I found another toy. This guy. This is the ball toy. Seems it's not big on this toy. Hi. She still, like, kinda likes it, but it's probably her least favorite. Probably because it's spiky and she likes soft things that squeak. This is stupid. I like to put, like, scarves and stuff on my dog. Like, not to the extent of craziness or anything. I do not dress my dog up. This is like a little collar thing that for Halloween that we found for like a dollar and has little bats on it. So sometimes I make her wear it like that. <laughs> but I won't torture you, no. Also in this bag we have two extra leashes. This one's from my old dog. I found it at like the dollar store and I really liked it. It is a leash, it is a chain. I don't suggest buying one yourself because <laughs> As I said, like, you can't feel anything through the dog through this, and also, I don't think this leash would be very sturdy, so if your dog pulls, don't go for the chain leash. You want to feel what your dog is doing through your leash, and this doesn't, doesn't do that at all. And then I also have a, uh, another leash I bought off Guide Dogs of the Desert, and this, you might actually be able to tell it's much more stiff than my other leash, I've never actually used it, but I bought it just in case I lose my first leash, or it breaks, or someone chews to it, which she shouldn't do because she's good. Ooh, our food container. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is where I store part of Cindy's food at a certain time. The top just unrolls like this, and you open it up, and voila, food! Uh, this stores about 20 pounds, honestly. Like, yeah, probably about 20 pounds of food, maybe a little less. Uh, but I get 40 pound bags of food and it usually fits in this in two goes, so. And this is a one cup measuring cup from Guide Dogs of the Desert that they give you in class. They give you most of, a lot of the things I've went over here they have given me in class, but uh, that's very useful for measuring out the food. And these kind of containers that screw on are super, super nice because you don't smell the food. I keep this in my room and I never smell dog food except when she's eating it. Last but not least, uh, the stuff that I bring with Cindy is in my bag, in my purse, because a lot of handlers do just always bring a certain amount of items with them wherever they go. I've managed to fit them in here with some other things, and I will show you all of her stuff in here, which is the stuff we travel with on a daily basis. Cindy has gotten sick while working before in that she has thrown up. Uh, guide dogs get sick like any other animal, and when Cindy gets sick, she splurfs and it's not good. She throws up sometimes. So when that happens, you need to be prepared for it. You need to clean it up. You need to be a responsible handler, just like you'd be with a kid. What she has here is um, we have just some paper towels for any kind of cleanup emergencies. And those are like the really nice absorbent ones <laughs> because I can only fit so many in this bag. Actually, this is a folded up shopping bag uh, to put any trash that goes towards cleanup in. You really have to think about <laughs> all those different dynamics of an emergency situation like that because it's great if you have rags to clean up stuff with, but where do the rags go? So this is a trash bag. These are wipes and they're actually just baby wipes. I think we got them at Target, but uh, they're gentle baby wipes and that's the most important thing. I use these to clean her paws if they get muddy. Uh, sometimes I'll use them to wipe stuff off of her if she gets something in her fur and we're out and I can't cut it out. So these are really nice. And then, of course, my good friend hand sanitizer. <laughs> Always have hand sanitizer when you're working with the dog. And then we have her foldy bowl, her collapsible bowl. This is made of like a silicone, plasticky kind of material. 
and you just push it out and there you go, you have a bowl. My favorite thing about this bowl is it is equally as effective with water and food. It will fit her two cups of food she gets and it'll also easily take water and it will not spill the water or leak or get soggy. So these bowls are great. <laughs> I totally suggest using them. And then everyone's favorite thing of Cindy's. Her shoes. <laughs> Cindy has shoes. Pretty much all guide dog schools issue shoes, and Cindy lives in a very hot climate, Las Vegas, where her feet can easily burn in the summer, so we use shoes, and we also use them when going on hikes. These shoes are rough wear, they're very nice, they're called rough wear grip tricks. And Cindy actually has two different sizes of feet. Her front feet are a small, her back feet are an extra small. But she's a poodle and they have little feet. These are very useful and we use them a lot. And they help her feet from getting burnt or getting spiky things in them. That is the majority of Cindy's stuff. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to end this video and think, oh my gosh, there's more. But as of now, we don't have a raincoat for or anything like that. Cindy and me are a pretty new team. We've only been together for about seven months and we are building our repertoire of things up. <laughs> so I'm thinking about getting her both a coat for when she is cold. I'm also thinking of getting her a cooling vest as well because it's so hot here and if we're doing events in the summer outside she might get very warm. So we might do that but for now uh, you've seen most of what we have. I hope that was interesting and you got to learn lots about all of Cindy's things and sorry this video is longer but Cindy has a lot of stuff. Thank you for watching guys. If you have any questions about any equipment or suggestions about equipment that we should get, or you just want to know more about Cindy and I in general, please feel free to ask in the comments and we will totally answer them. Right? Right? We will totally answer them. Until then, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.